There are other ways of moving information over large distances other than by the telephone. And you're seeing one of them now. It's television. And computer programmes are already being transmitted by the BBC as part of its teletext service. Graham Clayton is the editor of BBC's teletext service, CFAX. Graham, how does CFAX work? Well, it's an ingenious way of using the television signal to get pages of information onto the TV screen. The normal television picture is made up of a number of lines, but there are spare lines at the top, and we use these lines to carry CFAX. The flashing dots you see there are, in fact, CFAX. A digital signal. Normally, you wouldn't see them on an ordinary television. That's right. It would be off the top of the screen. You wouldn't notice it. How is that different to a normal television set? It's got inside it a decoder, which takes that stream of data and turns it into pages of information, and there's a hand controller with which you can call up the pages you want. Well, let's do that now. There it is. Well, how does it link into a computer? Well, unfortunately, it's not possible to get the teletext signal out of the teletext set and into the micro. So you need a teletext adapter, like this, which is plugged into the micro. The adapter requires an ordinary television aerial. I'll just borrow this one. And this goes into the back of the adapter, like that. Now all I have to do is put the micro into the teletext mode and it'll begin to receive pages like the one you just saw. Oh, there it is. So that with this teletext adapter, and of course the BBC Mac, you can convert any ordinary television set into a teletext set. That's exactly right. You can look at any of the pages of teletext information on any of the TV channels. So what else can it do for the microcomputer? Well, we have a page which I think you might find interesting, which I'm going to call up now by dialing 701. You just see it at the bottom there, and pressing return. And what is happening now is the receiver is waiting for page 701 to be broadcast, going through all the other CFAX pages. And when it comes to 701, there it is, REM. It's the CFAX telesoftware newsletter. Which is updated regularly, I That's suppose. right. So if you need to keep in touch with what's happening as far as CFAX telesoftware is concerned, you can just call up page 701. OK, so how do we get a programme down from the service into the micro? The first thing to do is to find out what programmes are available. So, first of all, I'll call up another page, page 700. And the point about uh, telesoftware on CFAX is that we're constantly changing, constantly renewing the programmes. So you need each time to turn to page 700 and find out what is currently available. There, there'll be a list of programmes and a little bit of information about each underneath. Shall we try and load one down? What about BrickUp? OK, once again, we start by calling up the appropriate page number. In this case, as you can see, 704. And once again, we wait for the sequence to go round to page 704, and then you'll see telesoftware. Now, I just put this into the telesoftware mode, and it begins to download the program and immediately. We've got a page there straight away, in fact. But it would take quite a bit of time to load it, so we've already done that. Why don't we load it in from disk and have a look at it? That's right. Once you've captured a program, you can either run it immediately on your micro, or you can load it onto disk or cassette and save it for whenever you want it. We've got it, as you say, on disk now, so let's just... Because the nice thing that I like about this program is that it's completely free and all the new ones will come to you completely free. That's absolutely right. Once you've bought the add-on adapter, the whole service is free. Or at least included in your television license. Absolutely. And you can see how it works. You're asked to guess a word. Oh, I remember this in a previous programme. We right. saw some children using it in Have school. Have a guess. Uh, Two-wheel vehicle, a bike. I don't think it's going to like it. The word was bicycle. Well, oh, uh, you can't win them all. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> Sorry. Um, bench. Much better. And now we get our prize. And eventually, after you've got sufficient words right, you in fact demolish the brick wall and escape at the far end. And what other sort of programmes are you going to be transmitting? Well, to begin with, we'll be concentrating, I think, mainly on educational programmes, though I hope they'll be of general interest too. Some of those programmes will be specially commissioned to go with BBC broadcasts. Then we'll be trying things like uh, data files. I hope there'll always be scope for a sort of amateur page, a club page, where people can exchange programmes. And who knows, eventually perhaps a CFAX Game of the Week? Well, thank you very much, Graham, and the best of luck with your telesoftware service. Well, now we've come to the end of this series of programmes. We hope that whether you've got a machine of your own or not, you've enjoyed the glimpse that we've given you of the wide range of things a microcomputer can do. 
as our final act, and I'm afraid it's only going to work if you've got a BBC microcomputer, we're going to send an end-of-series message from this machine here. So put the microphone of your cassette recorder as close as you can to the television loudspeaker and start recording now. We'll be sending you audible tones, and they last about 30 seconds. To try and make sure the tones are easy to receive, we're sending them at 30 characters a second. So when you come to play the tape into your computer, you'll need to type star tape 3, like this. And here it comes. Well, that music's so beautiful that one day they'll make a disc of it. And there's one last thing. In October, we hope to have a Making the Most of the Micro special, a two-hour programme where we'll be attempting to answer some of your questions and to demonstrate things for you live from the studio. Until then, from all of us here, goodbye. Well, the series may have come to an end, but for details of information about the project, including notes for teachers, the BBC microcomputer system, the BBC telesoftware service, associated correspondence courses, and information about other courses, computer clubs, and other sources of local advice, please send a 12 inches by 9 inches addressed envelope with 16 and a half pence postage to Broadcasting Support Services, Post Office Box 7, London W36XJ and please indicate clearly what information is required. Now, if you want notes for teachers on the first five programmes, you must enclose an 80 pence postal order payable to Broadcasting Support Services with your stamped addressed envelope. Tomorrow's World is uh, now on BBC One. Here on two, Bob Solkell presents his final report on micros in the classroom. This is Golf Alpha Kilo Charlie Sierra, over. What do you require, over? I wish you to start our engines, over. Yes, you do, over. Thank you, over and out. Over and out. Start the engines. Mm -hmm. Checks. ILS off. ILS off. off. Check. Brakes on. Check. Display on. Check. Throttle set to less than V2. Check. Check. Fuel master on. Check. Check. Jet ignition on. Check. Total levers to maximum. Check. Then return to listen V2. Check. Check. Ask for taxing clearance and ascertain where and we can use it. When we built this flight simulator, and I think this is an important point. Our